Hello coin collectors out there. So what do all three of these coins have in common? If you answered that they all have presidents on them, then you are correct. We have the first, the 34th, and the 35th president. But that's not really what makes them special. Most coins have presidents on them. Uh, the only ones I can think that don't have presidents are probably uh, Sacagawea, Susan B. Anthony, Lady Liberty, Ben Franklin. So I guess there are a decent amount of coins that don't have presidents on them, but most of them do. But these presidents are all special because on the reverse of the coin, we have the special bicentennial design. So uh, I've made videos about these designs individually, but I wanted to put it all together into one video to share with you. Kind of nice uh, synopsis of all of the coins that were made for this special bicentennial anniversary. So as you can see on the obverse of all the coins, it's the standard design, except on the date down at the bottom here, you see 1776 to 1976. So that uh, commemorates the bicentennial, the 200th year anniversary of the signing of Declaration of Independence. So this one right here has the quarter and has the uh, drummer boy on the reverse. But first, before I start explaining this, I want to kind of explain uh, why these coins can be pretty cool and pretty unique. Uh, there were a lot of these coins that were produced and a lot of people held on to them because whenever the mint usually changes up the design, like you'll see with the 2017 P Philadelphia Mint Penny, uh, people hang on to them, they hoard them, they put them away because they think they're going to be a lot more valuable than they actually turn out being. So these coins were all mass produced. The mintages of these coins are in the hundreds of millions, so they're not necessarily rare. You can find plenty of circulated coins out there, but if you're coin roll hunting, you can come across some near uncirculated coins. And that's because, because people thought that they're going to be rare. They plucked them out of circulation right when they came out, and they might have been sitting out of circulation for you know 30 or 40 years. So you might find a nice looking one in there. Also, when you're looking at these bicentennial quarters, they have pretty intricate designs to them. So that's gonna lead to some coins not being fully struck. So what that means is that the design, it's not, I guess, fully uh, all there. You can't see all of the details to it. So the most common example of that is, um, you might not be able to see it that well on this video, but there are some instances where the bicentennial quarter, it's not fully struck around the rim of the drum. So all of the detail that should be there isn't there. So this one right here, uh, you can see it's pretty weak around the rim. So if you get a quarter that's a bicentennial quarter and it's fully struck you can see all of the details and all of the details really stand out that's where the real value is for bicentennial coins so uh, this right here is the drummer boy as I said the next up we have uh, on the obverse we have JFK facing left then on the reverse let me move this big one out of the way here uh, we have Independence Hall this is the uh, where the Declaration of Independence was signed 200 years after, uh, excuse me, before this coin was made. So uh, you guys know that there's many millions of the quarter that were made. So I'll give you the mintages for the uh, half dollar right here. So there are 234 million made at the Philly Mint, 287 at the Denver, and 7 million proofs were cranked out for this uh, half dollar. So this is what the obverse looks like. Your standard uh, JFK half dollar. Got the date at the bottom. The next one, the big dollar, uh, we've got Ike on it. We've got the uh, 34th president of the United States, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, the man himself. Now, obviously this is most notably a huge coin. Just look at it in comparison to the quarter right there. It makes it look tiny. But let me get into, here's the design. You've probably seen it before. Let me flip it over. 
So this one actually has uh, two kind of varieties to it that people might not know about. There is the block lettering and then there is the thin lettering. So those uh, have to do with the lettering that's on the back of the coin. In uh, 76, there were 82 million made at the Denver Mint with the thin lettering and 21 million made at the Denver Mint with the block lettering. Uh, the same goes for the Philly Mint with uh, slightly, or I guess drastically less block lettering made at the Philly Mint. So uh, check out the lettering on your coins. Even if you do have the block lettering, uh, it might not be worth too much more than face value just because people were hanging on to these. So uh, just as some notes to wrap up the video here, uh, look for the real fully struck bicentennial coins. Look for bicentennial coins that people might have been hoarding or might have taken out into circulation and then put back into circulation. So you can find these coins uh, coin roll hunting or going through boxes of bank coins or maybe you'll just come across them in your uh, change someday. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're into coin collecting, please do check out the other videos on my channel. Putting a lot of effort into them, trying to make as much of a variety as I can. So hopefully you're enjoying it and have a great day.